Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day wherever you are. In today's episode, we are going to explore adding RSS feed capabilities to our Spring Boot blog application. Yeah, I think it's a quick and easy way to sort of add a ability to generate a proper RSS feed. As you can see on the page right behind me, or the page you're looking at, sorry, we have got a RSS feed generated from the two sample blog posts that we are putting into our system by default. So naturally, if you've got more in your database, there's going to be more showing up on yours. But we'll get started with the way to present these two. So yeah, so there's a li and there's an existing library for Java Spring Boot well, Java apps in general, that can make use of, which is the Roam framework. So it's a Java framework specifically for generating RSS and Atom feeds. It's open source and it's available also on the Maven repository. So the latest version is 1.18.0. So that's what we're going to be dropping into our app. And then we're just going to be generating the necessary code to put together a RSS feed for us. I think this will be pretty cool. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the POM XML file for our Spring Boot blog application. And as you can see, I've scrolled down near the end of our dependencies list. And all we need to do is drop in that Roam dependency into this file. So the easiest way is to get back onto the Maven repository site and just click on the version name and it'll give you a little box here that you can click into. It's it's immediately copied to your clipboard. And then we can just paste it right in here. Control V. Boom. Okay, then we'll just get IntelliJ here to reload the project to pull in the dependency. So what we want to do is we want to create a new controller, a REST controller that listens for the a get request to slash RSS. That's usually the uh, the URL path that most sites use for displaying the RSS, their RSS feeds. So before we add any controller support, let's go into the security because we're going to have to update this. And just in our request matchers section here, we just got to make sure to add support for RSS. So it can be anywhere in this list, just request matchers slash RSS slash star star and then just permit all. There we go. Nice. And then let's go ahead and we'll add a new REST controller. We'll just call it RSS feed controller and we'll give it the annotation of REST controller. And what we'll need to do is use the auto wired annotation to pull in the post service that we've already got created. Okay, and then we'll create a get mapping as I said, RSS. And then we'll just, we'll be returning a roam tools channel RSS feed. Uh, we can call the function whatever we want, uh, but we'll be using a parameter of HTTP servlet request. And the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to create a new channel. So channel channel equals new channel. And then we need to set the feed type. And for now, probably for a long time, it'll just be RSS 2.0. I don't think they've updated the RSS spec in a very long time. And just for good reason, they haven't needed to. Uh, so this is the overall sort of section uh, in our RSS feed that gets displayed. So let's uh, set a channel. Let's also set a title for our, our this will be the title of our RSS feed. So I, I'm just calling it Spring Boot Blog Application. Change that to, of course, whatever your app ends up being called. And we can set a description on the channel of, you know, my demo blog in Spring Boot. Of course, set any channel you want. And then for a, we've got the ability to set a link. So that would be like a link back. And so let's, for now, we'll just use localhost 8080. I'll show you one, one way to uh, change that later on. And also a set URI. 
to the same thing, HTTP localhost 8080. And then we can also set a property called generator. Uh, I don't think this is mandatory, but I'm just calling it custom sauce. You can call it anything you want, of course. Uh, and you can even, this is even an optional field, so you can leave it blank. Uh, and then we'll grab today's date. So date today equals new date. And then channel set pub date of today. So whenever the request is made for the channel, that's when that's when the date will be created. Okay, then at the very bottom, let's return the channel. So we should have right now the, the bare minimum of creating an RSS feed. So let's go ahead and just see if this works. Let's go ahead and run this. Go to localhost slash RSS, and let's take a look at what gets generated. We've got our um, XML version uh, or XML properties, basic properties set up here at the top. We've got our um, RSS version properly here as 2.0. And then we've got a channel definition with our title, the link to our application, a description of the app, as well as today's date, and then the generator that we used. Again, totally optional. You can leave this one out. Okay, cool. So let's go back. And now what we're going to do is I want to grab a all of the all of the posts that are in our database and then generate a feed from them. Normally in some cases or in most cases, you may only want to generate like the last 10 um, or the newest 10 or maybe the top read articles of your blog, whatever you like. That's uh, the, the, the distinction there is up to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a list of Rome tools items. We'll call that our main feed. We'll create a new array list object to hold them in. And then we're gonna create a list of posts that we're gonna grab from our service. So post service get all. And then what we're gonna do is enumerate through each post in that posts list and basically create a new feed, a new item, and then dump it into the feed, the feed list. So item item equals new item. And then we've got a way to set an author for each blog post. Right now we're not tracking any authors. Maybe in a future a future episode, we'll go ahead and add so author support to this. Uh, so for now, just call it foo, or at least that's what I called my author. You can call it whatever, whatever you want. And then item set link. And then what we're going to do is call it slash posts, and then we'll append the ID of the post. And then item set URI, and then same thing, slash posts, and append the ID of the post. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the title, and we'll get it from the post itself, since we already have that property. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a description. Uh, we'll call it description equals new description. And we're going to set the value of this to be the body of the post. And then finally, we're going to add it into the item, back into the item. So set description, description. And then what we're going to do is we'll add this item into the feed list. Oh, one more thing we, we got to do is we, we can set the, the we can pass the date from the, the blog post into this RSS feed. Okay. So this is a little bit convoluted, uh, but we're, our post posts are using local date time and the, RSS feed item is just making use of a normal date. So we have to convert our local date time from our post into a date object that can be used by the Rome tools item property. Okay, so set pub date. So to do that, what we're gonna do is take the date class from date util and we'll take 
we'll create a date from an instant. So we'll convert our local date time into a instant object. So we'll get the post get updated at date in our local date time. Um, and then we'll convert that to the current zone that the system is running in, which we don't have to set. It's, a, it's automatically tracked by Spring Boot and then convert that to an instant. So again, all we're doing is the set pub date requires a regular date object and in our post, let's go back to post. In our post, our updated at field is a local date time object. So what we need to do is convert that local date time into a date. And then we add it into the feed. And then finally, before we return the whole channel, we set our items to be our feed. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, we'll refresh the page. And now we get a listing of all of our posts that are in the database. This is really, really cool. Okay, so the, the link is a little bit off. You'll notice here that we've got a slash post slash one, which it should, it should really be the actual link to the blog post itself. So in, in our case, it'll be HTTP localhost 8080 slash posts slash two for this one. So what we should do is create this, create this server link to be not to be hard coded to localhost 8080, uh, because when you want to publish this, publish your app on somewhere else other than your local machine, you're then gonna be generating uh, an invalid RSS feed. So someone's gonna come along, they'll hit the RSS feed, and if you've got um, hard-coded embedded links back to localhost 8080, uh, obviously no one's gonna be able to find the actual server that you've got your application hosted on. So to do that, what we can do is we can create a uh, base URL. So what we're gonna do is use something called servlet URI components builder and we're going to be using a function called from request URI and we'll pass in that HTTP servlet request that we got from the parameter of our controller and then what we're going to do is call a replace path with null and then just build it and then call the call a method called to URI string. So this will convert uh, your local, the domain and the port that your app is running on into a string that we can then just drop into our, right into our feed that gets generated. So we'll replace the set link with the base URL value as well as the URI property. And then down here where we're, where we're generating the link and the URI for our posts, we can just simply use base URL plus, plus the slash posts plus the post to get ID. So let's go ahead and restart the server and see how that looks. Okay, fantastic. You'll notice here that the link is now HTTP localhost 8080, which it was, we had hard coded it to, but now it'll be whatever app you've got it running on. So in order to, um, oh, and then down here for the posts, you'll see that we've got our HTTP localhost 8080 slash post slash one and slash post slash two. Now for extra, just to further highlight this point, let's go into the application and let's change the port to something else other than port 8080. Oops, so let's go into our application properties at the top and just for fun, let's just change this to port 3000. And let's run this again. And let's update this to be localhost 3000 slash RSS. And here we go. We've got HTTP localhost port 3000 in our main description link. And then for each post, we've got a the proper post of localhost 3000 slash posts slash one. So yeah, so I also found a, there's, there's many RSS feed tools available uh, that you can add to your browser. I just went to the Chrome web store and I picked this one called RSS feed reader. So let's go ahead and we'll add it to Chrome 
And what I'm going to do is point point it to the localhost port 3000 slash RSS just to show you what it looks like in an RSS feed reader. Okay, so allow it to add the extension and I'm not going to sync it. I'm not even going to go into the setup. So all you've got to do is the in the extensions button here, pull up the RSS feed reader, hit the get started button. And I don't want to log in. You can, you can use this without signing up for anything. So just continue without signing up and continue without an account. And then hit the plus button here and simply type in HTTP localhost 3000 slash RSS and hit search and it'll find the one that you've got running. Look, I mean, make sure your server's running. It, so if there's an error finding this application, then just double check that your server's running. Uh, so then you can hit the plus follow button. And then over here in your, your feeder list, uh, you can click it and then now you'll see all of your posts should be listed here. So you've got a you've got the title, you've got the description, and then the read more link will go directly to your server and to this uh, specific post. So let's try the what is Laura Ipsum. We can hit read more, and we get brought directly to our server slash post slash one, which is the correct URL. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I mean, how long has this been? Maybe fifteen minutes at the most. And we've been able to add RSS feed support into our blog application server, which I think is really cool. And it puts it on par with most blog engine platforms out there today. So I hope you learned a lot. I hope that was a neat little video to keep bolting on support for different features to the Spring Boot blog application. As always, the link to the GitHub repo is in the description down below. If you found this useful at all, I hope you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next episode. Peace, everyone.